So this is the funniest thing. I'm trying to bring Katie in, right? And for some reason, on Be Live, I cannot hear her until she comes in. And then I heard her, and she's like, oh, well, she can't hear me. And so she dropped out and, like, came in again. <laughs> it is one me? thing after another. I can hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, you're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> it's not me. I don't <laughs> Technology. Oh, technology is our nemesis, I think. <laughs> uh, so welcome everybody to Swipe Up to Chat. I am Emily Shatters and this is Katie Miller. And we are here to talk about friends. I know. And I don't know about you, but I could desperately use some friend time today. You know, I love Tuesdays for some reason. It's right at the perfect time every single time. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Every single time. Uh, so I'm going to let you go ahead and bring everybody like up to speed, what we're doing, everything like that. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and post a link so that our friends can hop in and join us. Awesome. That's perfect. You guys, I am so glad you're here. And if you didn't know, Emily is like one of my very best friends that I've actually met in real life now too. So before we used to say the best friend that we've never met. Um, we're talking about friendships today, and we're talking about the difference between guys and girls' friendships, whether girls get along better with guys or girls get along, you know, vice versa. But the other thing is, is that girls interact with their girlfriends differently than guys interact with their guy friends. You notice that? I, I mean, because I instantly know the difference when Tom's talking and hanging out with his friends. Totally different than when he's talking to girls. Isn't that true, Emily? Oh, 100%. Like, in fact, I tease him that he's got his, I'm talking to a girl voice. Because if he's talking to a girl, he's like, oh, hi, how are you? And if it's the guys, he's like, hey, man, what's going on? <laughs> totally, totally different interaction. You know, it's also a little bit different. Like, I think there's, there's a couple of differences in that <clears throat> there's how guys talk to guys. And then there's how guys talk to girls that they respect. And then there's how guys talk to girls. That they want to get with. <laughs> hey Kim, yeah, how oh, are yeah. you? Yes, definitely. Hey Kim, it's uh, it's totally different the way they interact, and I like to see. It's funny because when girls hang out with their girlfriends, the things that they plan are like so totally different than the guys. We like go through all of these details of planning what we're gonna do. Well, everybody but Emily. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it just depends because there are those moments that I don't mind not planning anything, just hanging out. Mm -hmm. But most of the time when girls plan to go do something with their friends, they plan it. Okay, I'm going to pick you up at this time. We're going to go here. We're going to have a, we're going to get a movie. We're going to get food or we're going to do this or that. They, they have an idea of what they're doing. When guys hang out with their friends, nine times out of 10, unless they're going to an event, like a sporting event, they're just hanging out. They might not even say a word, but the game's on. Yeah, and that's quality time. It is quality time to them. <laughs> it, is. it is. And and it can be quality time um, to anyone, but it's it's just different the way they interact. But Emily and I had did you did anybody if you're in here, who else is in here? I want to see if anybody will jump in. I have been missing yeah, Kim something out. awful. I would love to have Kim jump in. I know. I need her in, and she's not feeling very well, so I'm, I'm oh, no. up to it. I have to go run and do something really fast. Otherwise, I'm just going to flip out on screen, and everybody's going to be like, what the heck? We thought she was crazy, but now we know for sure. Okay, can she's I, a mom of teenagers, so I'm just going to say that um, it's what it is, right? <laughs> Maybe we should get somebody in first, and then I can go ahead and hop out for two seconds. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can get Kim in here real quick. Is Kim available to join us? That would be lovely if she is. Has, yes. Has, no? Everybody's Who else is met Kim, here? right? She's Kim is one of those people that. Okay, so this is what I tell everybody every time I am with Kim. It's like if you took all the good things of my mom and all the good things of my aunt, and you mixed them together, and you kept in the good bits of crazy. Exactly. That's Kim. I love her 100%. <laughs> I absolutely agree. I'm not sure why this isn't coming up on here where I can see comments. Hey, Kim. She's still getting ready and I just pulled her in. Kim. 
Yay. How you feeling? Uh oh. What was that? That's a lie. <laughs> I'm all right. Doing the liquid thing. A liquid thing. A yeah. liquid thing. Liquid thing is so much fun. Hang on a minute. Oh, she's not feeling well. And she still came in. I know. She's awesome like that. Wow. I think we might see something on screen. This will be Thank you, Kim. What's that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what? What? All right. What do you see? What do you see? I'm just like, is she going to chuck on air? This is going to be so exciting. No. No. No, I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually, uh, Okay, I gotta figure out this two screen thing. Wait a second. Because I'm on <laughs> if I watch it on the B Live thing, I can't see on the other one. No, I'm I'm much better today. Um so is it like the flu or something? Hang on. Well, I'm kind of a mess. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm, I'm discombobulated for sure today. Well, well she becomes totally together combobulated. Um, what? Emily, Emily and I both met Kim in person. Yes. And survived it. Uh, I, you oh. survived us. How about that? Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see you guys again. Actually. She survived me, Jake, and Samantha. Yeah, but you know, Jake has this thing. Yes, he does. With me. You know, I can't talk to Katie for more than 20 seconds. And Jake is like, okay, that's enough. It, he's exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I don't know what it is. We're going to have to have a discussion when I come up next time. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, Maybe that's what it is. I didn't stay long enough last time. Hello. When are you coming to see me again, Aunt Kim? Uh, next week. <laughs> that works. So, Kim, we are talking about friendships today. And obviously, we have formed a friendship here. Yes. But you probably have some friends that you've been friends with for years and years and years, I would imagine. I do, yeah. So who is your best friend? Um, you know, I don't know if I can say I have a best friend. Okay, interesting. I have different types of friends. Mm -hmm. um, I have friends from the military that, you know, when, when you bond with somebody in tragedy or in um trauma or very dire circumstances that creates a different type of friendship we don't always speak but we know that we're always there for each other and at any minute's notice we would do anything for each other i have yeah. friends like that because of the military so i know yeah. exactly what you're talking about you and the fire department is the same way mm -hmm. you know i i haven't talked to the guys since i retired that much you know a couple of them but um we don't keep our friendship going but i could I could walk in the house, you know, anytime in any firehouse that I'm not even a member of. And there's, there's just certain things that just, they're always there, no matter if you have contact with each other or not. Right. Right. What did I miss? Um, we were talking about, no, we weren't talking about Don't tell her. <laughs> Don't tell her. She'll want us to. <laughs> I'll tell you what I was going to do while you uh, let me know what, what you guys are talking about. Meet? You know, I don't know if any, no, nobody has this problem. So how about I just leave it at that? Okay. Now you're assuming something and not, and you may not have all the facts. Let us be the judge of whether or not. Exactly. You don't know. know. Yeah. Come on, creeper. I'm on the line. <laughs> what, is, what is that? What? Oh, I can't laugh that much though. I'm doing what? a show. What? Don't laugh. Creeper. I can't. Yeah. Well, Emily is having her conversation on that. I love you. Do you get Life along? Streaming. I know. Do you get along with guys better than girls, or girls better than guys? I mean, who who do you usually get along with better? Okay, I don't get along with the guys' wives. No, no, women. No, that's one thing. Working in the fire department. Oh my gosh, I fought that more than anything. You know, because you work twenty four hours with them, and the military too. But it's like, you know, that old saying. You know, you don't crap where you eat or where you sleep, you know, I mean, it's just, and, um, but that's a hard thing to get, um, across to women because there have been instances where not everybody has that integrity. And, um, 
but the the bond and the relationship that I have with guys because I've always worked in those types of fields, I guess, um, mm -hmm. is is much easier. I've always felt uncomfortable around women, groups of women, because I, did, I felt like I didn't fit in. And um, but I've had really close women friends um, throughout the years. And like I said, still, I could just I know I could just call them up. And we haven't talked for a long time and it would take us about 15 minutes to catch up and it'd be like we hadn't been apart at all. I think they're different caliber of women, aren't they? Like I've come to see that there are different grades of yeah. women. There yeah. are, there's quality and that quality is going to be for there for you and, and be able to like, you know, connect with you. And then there's superficial. I wonder if it's the same with guys. Well, one thing I've noticed working with a lot of men, um, women tend to have friendships for many different reasons. Yes. Men don't. Really? Men pretty much have friendships for like one reason. We have some men in the audience. We should have. Somebody yeah, should ask them. I want, yeah, I want Carlos to jump in here. I, I think so too. Now? Yeah, just, just click on the link, Carlos. You know, I think you're right. And I think that, I mean, I would imagine it happens with men too, but I know that women have friends because of circumstances. And we talked about this before where, where a lot of people that I was friends with at early on you know, years ago was because our kids were little together. Yeah. And we did stuff together or we, we were at the dance studio all the time. So everybody at the studio instantly became your friends. Oh, Carlos is cooking. Like Carlos. A, that's awesome. Um, you know, there's those circumstances. Yana, go away. I'm sorry. My daughter just came in in a towel. She's like, hi, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, like, like snapper. <laughs> <laughs> you never know where the broadcast is going to go when Emily's on. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you, we don't, we don't even have, close here. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have that at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Towels? Uh, you, don't oh, have no. you don't have clothes. Naked people. <laughs> oh, man, I can't keep clothes on these kids ever since they were born. And my husband's just like, can we get some clothes on them? And they're just like, why? It's just natural. He's <laughs> <laughs> just my brother. She's just my sister. <laughs> I've got underwear on and a long shirt. What more do you want? <laughs> exactly. I don't know why I can't get this to see the comments coming up. I've got comments. Nobody's saying anything. They're all quiet as pie. Well, I yeah, I saw Lori came in. Hi, Lori. Um, but that's the last one I've seen. I'm jumping back and forth from the looking at the screen on Facebook yeah. and I'm echoing with somebody so, and on the be live screen. So this is like a show of us watching the show. I yeah. think that's what this is turning yeah. into. <laughs> so, uh, I would like to have some other people jump on here with us because I want to hear from everybody. I got to say, you know, Kim, don't take any offense to this because I like men better, period. You don't have to pretend with them. You don't have to. The games. I can't stand games. I just, you know, say it like it is, put it out there. And you remind me of a guy. I think that's why I love you so much. <laughs> well, because I don't. Yeah, I don't. Um, right. No, and I don't take offense to that. Um that's actually a compliment. That's why I get along with guys so well, because I don't, there's no drama with me. Yeah. Oh. You know, I'm, I'm pretty real and I don't play a bunch of games. And that's why I don't usually hang out with a lot of groups of women. Not right. that, you know, there, there's always other things going on that just aren't, you know, I don't want to say important to me, but they don't fit with, you know, where I'm at, I guess. And right. uh, so yeah. So what That's is a good observation. Really that you actually like? Girly? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, there's definitely a difference with um, the intimacy that I have in my friendships with women um, because we're more emotional and, you know, Katie, you know, is um, really bad about this. Um, getting it in my business and, <laughs> you know, 
Well, it's, the, it's, the caring, so. it's the caring factor. I, was you know? say, I wouldn't say I'm bad about it. I would say that I am good about it. I care about you. You yeah. are. You're, she doesn't let things slide because she cares. And, and wow. guys, you know, are more, you can hide a lot more from them. I, I put it that way. Um, so, so I do like the fact that women are a little more in tune with um, what's really going on with people. Do you think that's like an empathy thing? Like, I think yeah. empathy is something that anybody can have. And I think it's something that you can grow, but you have to actually focus on it and do. I'm froze? No. Or is it me? It's, it's you. Her. Is it me? <laughs> but I don't think guys are aware enough or... I don't think guys are concerned enough with empathy to go ahead and work on it as a value or a trait or yeah. Do you think that's changing? Sometimes. I, I just think it depends on the guy. I think women are becoming more manly and, and caring less. And I think there are some men that are stepping up to the plate, but. Yeah. I don't think they're caring less. I think they're becoming more independent and speaking up for themselves more. Which comes off as caring less because our role is usually the caretaker and the one that's supposed to feel the emotions and have more caring. So when we step out of that and I, and I'm, I'm actually a very caring person. You um, are, you're one of those people, like you were saying about Katie, you don't let anything go. No, if you see somebody is something's <laughs> wrong with somebody uh, that, that wasn't a convincing good. Well, what's going on? <laughs> Yeah, well, but the on the fire. surface, people don't get that from me because I, I very do not, I do not act like that, really. Carlos just said something interesting, and I agree with him on that. That a lot of women are more shallow lately, and you know what I think? Yeah, we're seeing is that, well, maybe not. I know for me, there was a time where I held back for a while, and that was because I had been burned by too many girls. Yeah. And so I held back and, and honestly, still, when I like meet people, I usually hold back for a little while. If I've like, this is different when we met because we've been chatting for a while, but I usually sit back and watch for a while before I jump right in because I don't know if I can trust you. Yeah. And, and I think it's something I think everybody in general is mm -hmm. becoming less caring, less concerning. Um, I don't think it's a man or woman thing. I think it's just people in general have been bombarded with a whole bunch of things and it's, they're desensitized. They, to, I guess as a way to function and process different stresses in their life, they have to go ahead and put up a harder shell. And I just see that in humankind in general. Hey, Tom. What do you think, Tom? Hi. <laughs> he thinks he wants some uh, Rice Krispie treats and some cheese balls. <laughs> All right, I'll see you a little bit. Okay, I love you. He, um, you know, here's here's how Tom Miller is with friends. He used to hang out with his friends all the time, and I feel like part of it's my it's all my fault. It's all my fault, you guys. <laughs> The only friends he hangs out with now are the friendships that I kind of make happen for him other than his card playing friends. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't call them. He doesn't, he just doesn't because he figures they're going to contact me to get together anyway, because that's how the schedules go. And I think that sometimes happens when you're married that long and you have mutual friends that the guy just kind of lets the girl take care of it and They'll see him when they see him. And if not, Tom Miller is happy to sit on the couch and watch a show and eat his cheese balls and Rice Krispie Treats. I'm with Tom. Can I come over and uh, have some of those cheese balls and Rice Krispie Treats? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know what that's all about, we made fun of him and told him that he didn't have any friends. And he brought his, his big thing of Sam's Club cheese balls. And Samantha and Matt got him these giant Rice Krispie Treats. And he came down with a hat sideways. He goes, I'm hanging with my homies. <laughs> That's all I need. When we pulled up, my daughter, when we did our road trip, there was a list of things that we needed to pack. And the very first thing on that list was cheese balls. And we got that big old tub that he had. And so by the time we got to your house, which was what, a couple days later, gone. The whole thing was completely gone. 
like those. How do you eat those? Oh, she loves them. Just <laughs> okay. Who's running the bubbler? Is that is yeah, that who is that? Is that Mike or Melissa? Melissa? Oh, yeah. You guys aren't signing. Who, who is that? Am I weird? I just love people. Yeah, you're weird. I mean, at least you're weird for me. You know um, Kelly, I, I think you can come in on your iPad. Click on the link yeah. and see if you can. And if not, then we know. <clears throat> you know what, Danica? I'm not surprised by how uh, how well you love your friendships. Danica is amazing. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Mm -mm. And I love And her. I haven't met Danica in person yet. Soon. <sighs> Soon. I have. Me too. I know. I but know. I saw the summer party. party. I know. I was sitting here thinking, okay, they're having this cool summer party and I'm you all the way up here. Because you I, were in New York with me and you could have just come along. I know. I know. Yeah, I thought about it. I, I did think about it. But you know why I didn't? Okay. Talking about friendship. Mm -hmm. Here's another thing about friendship. You can't have a a good time if there's too many people because you can't spread yourself with the same intensity to everybody that's in the group. Mm -hmm. Smaller groups are better, especially on first meetings. And one of the reasons I did not go that way, I mean, there were others, but um, it wasn't my place to do that. That was something you guys were, you know, I mean, I joke that I wasn't there and, you know, but, but, but no, that, what, uh, what? whatever, one, I met me already. Two, you I met know. Katie already. I know. Three, there's something different about the social interaction that I, I don't know if it's like this on any other platform, but I know on Snapchat, you get deep, intense relationships. So it's not like you were going to show up and be like, Oh, huh, you guys like me on my snap, but you don't like me here. We love you. <laughs> not that. I mean, it would not have been that. a great addition. It was we just giving work. you guys space. Do you oh. understand what I'm trying to say? You have my phone number and I have yours. And what happens? We use it. Although I didn't answer your call earlier because I was on the on the on a call with Mike Models. I never say his name, right? Model Sky. Model Sky. Model I wanted to say Model Sky. I knew it was wrong. I always want to say um, Model Ski, but it's Model Sky. Oh, is it model sky? Sorry, Mike. Um, okay, so that's a perfect example. Uh, if you're really friends, I didn't give that a second thought. I, I don't. I don't assume that you're not answering my call because you don't want to talk to me. Right. I just, if you don't answer, it's because there are other things going on, and that's fine. When you have time, we'll get together or whatever. I think people who push friendships. Or try to try to get um, build a friendship that's maybe not um, as cohesive in the beginning as as they would like it to be, and they're and they're pushing it a little too fast. Might think that differently. They might they might think they always read into what people are saying or doing or not saying or not doing, and that hurts friendships. It's got to. That's why I say I'm just. There's no drama. It's just. It is what it is. Right. You know. So you had said that you you really liked your friendships with um, your army friends and with your firefighter friends because you could go months and not talk to each other or whatever. Example, I have I have three best friends. My very best friend, Sandy, lives a mile away from me. And sometimes I don't see her for a month at a time because we're so swamped. We usually talk every day. And this past week, we hadn't talked in almost a week. And what I love about that friendship is neither one of us felt like somebody was mad at the other person. Mm -hmm. And I called her real quick today and said, hey, I haven't talked to you in almost a week. Um, is everything okay? Are you at work right now? Are you at home? And what are you doing later? No questions about anything else other than I know you've been busy. She said the same thing to me. Yep, great. Awesome. Off the phone in like three minutes. Done. Why? Because when you have a friendship that's that's – just a real friendship. You don't have that. And I have two other friends that live out of state. We might not talk for a long time, but you know, if I texted either one of them, they would be there in a, in a second, you know? So Kelly, how are Hi. you? Hi. I know. We never get to chat other than the snap. <laughs> how know? are you feeling, Kelly? I'm good today. How good. are you guys? Good. Good. 
So Kelly, yeah, I, yes. tell us about your friends and who's your best friend? <laughs> well, believe it or not, my best friend lives out of state. Um, most of my friendships are not local. Mm -hmm. Most of my friendships are outside of Memphis. Okay. Um, I am very particular when it comes to people that I allow in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, most people that are that I'm talking to now know what I've been through and the trauma that I've endured. And so I'm really kind of particular about who I allow in my life. Um, thanks, Emily. Um, I know. I was like, where did she go? <laughs> She's like, she just ditched her own show. <laughs> but what I have found is I've had to be very particular about who I allow in my life because number one, I need people in my life that are positive. So if I've allowed you in my life, that means that you have a positive influence in my life. Um, you also are genuine uh -huh. and real. I, I can't do the phony and the one-sided friendships. And I don't care if it's a male or a female. Um, you know, so many people are out for themselves. And that's why I'm always very careful. And I absolutely, um, there's no snacks in the green room. <laughs> um you know, that's why I love the connections that I've made on social media. Mm -hmm. Some of my closest friends I've never met. I've never Isn't met crazy? them. Isn't that crazy? In your wildest dreams, did you ever imagine that you would not only meet people from all over the world, make real friendships and never physically see them? Exactly. I, I, well, I, have, a, I have a theory on that. Okay. Okay, think about your family. When no, my family in a, in a good way. No, or my when whole family. We have friends and we have family and their th family knows everything about us, right? Where there we can't there's no secrets, they know all our flaws, all that. But friendships, especially friendships and I'm like you Kelly, a lot of mine are not um geographically near me. Although I'm geographically like all over the place. But I mean I don't like, I don't do my neighbors. I don't have friends in the town that I live in usually. Um, and it, it's be, maybe because it's safer because they don't, if, if you're, if there's a distance between us, you don't see every day. Although now I'm on Snapchat, everybody sees every day, but, 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 but and that's been very hard for me because I'm used to people not seeing every day and I'm very particular about what I share and, you know, the personal parts of my life. So I think that has a lot to do with why the friendships are so deep mm -hmm. in these social media um, venues and, you know, on Facebook or in Snapchat or the groups that we're in um, because we share what's, what's intimate to us in the friendship and yeah. not necessarily everything else. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. No, I get that because there's just some things you don't. And well, yeah, you're right. Although I'm kind of one of those open book kind of girls. So you kind of get what you're going to get with me. Yeah. You are. And if I'm upset, y'all are going to know it. Yeah. And if I'm really excited, you know it. And you, if I think it's funny, even if nobody else does, you all are going to know it. Yeah. <laughs> and I take my neighbor's big goods. <laughs> But you know, if I if I'm having a bad day, mm -hmm. and I don't want people to know I'm having a bad day, I just am not on anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I have that opportunity with friends that are not next to me, and um, you know, I have people ask about my sister. You asked about my sister the other day. You know, we don't spend much time together, even though we live, you know, less than five miles away from each other, and um, it's because we both respect each other's mm -hmm. privacy and and space so that because we're close we make sure we don't um infringe on that mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm, I'm not close with my family. Um, and oh, I, I, am. I have very little family anyway. And mm -hmm. so um, the friendships, I, there is a bond. Um, and this will probably surprise a lot of people, but in with human trafficking survivors, the bond that we share is one that I don't think anyone will understand because of the trauma that we've all endured. Um, I, uh, there is a closeness that, um, sorry, <laughs> there's a closeness that happens within the survivor community. And, um, you know, so I've never been one to be really close with women because uh -huh. I always thought they were backstabbers. And, you know, so for me to be able to look at you, Katie, or, or Emily, or, you know, the, the women that are coming in to my life, you're in my life for a reason. I allow you into my space because of that, um, of what you bring to the table as well. We're right. like minded. You should hear messages I send to Emily. I sound like Emily because my brain just goes 50 million places. And I know she's probably going, is this me on here really? <laughs> because I, I just get scattered, but you guys keep it real. Mm -hmm. And I have to have that realness in my life. I'm not going to give you anything less than who I am. Y'all are going to see me on my good days, my bad days. And if you can still be there for me when it, whether it's good, bad, ugly, indifferent, then that's what friendships are all about. And so that's how I'm feeling on friendships. So do you think as you're, as you're saying this and describing it, a thought just came over me. Do you think that maybe some of this has more to do with, I don't want to say that we're older, but that we are not, um, like 20, 30 some things anymore? Is it, do you think some of the, some of the things that we won't put up with in a friendship or some of the things that we need in a friendship are because we've, we've hit like that 40 and over mark and, and we've become comfortable in our skin to the point where we know what we need and we know what we definitely don't need. And we're able to do that. Cause I, I think, I think that my friendships now are so much better because I don't need that garbage anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't have to have everything everybody else is having. Right. I, can, I can decide what I want in my life. What do you think? Em? Okay. So you guys know, uh, Biff from back to the future. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he's a comedian and he actually has this song. He's, he sings, he plays guitar, stuff like that. And it's a song that he sings about embarrassing the crap out of his kids because he's over 40 and he doesn't care, you know? Exactly. And that is really what it is. You know, when we're younger, we're so concerned with fitting in. As humans, we want to have friends. We want to fit in. We don't want to be the outcast. But once we become a certain age, and I, I think it is, it, it's about that 40-year mark where you're tired. And I'm sorry, you're you're not my friend if if you can't deal with my laundry that I have to fold on my couch, exactly. or if I have to do my hair before. I don't have time for that garbage. Okay, mm -hmm. so you know, like I've been speaking to uh, some people, and when he's like, "How do you show up for business meetings and you're in bed?" and I'm like, "I don't care if, if you don't want to do a business with me because I show up." in bed, whatever, because I don't want to get dressed and I'm drinking my coffee. Well, then I guess you're missing out on a great opportunity. <laughs> you know, it's the real me. And I think that's why we have such rich relationships now is because there's, it's all, it's all gone. Like the covers have been peeled back and you see who you get to see. And if you don't like it, you move on. But chances are, 
you're going to like it because there's something of you. Like I'm sitting here watching all of you guys and Katie, you and I, we connect. There's something about us that we see in each other. Kelly and I, our brains are everywhere and we talk randomly about just all this different stuff. And right. I can understand her. She can understand me because our brains are just like that. Kim, there's no pretenses. You can just say right. it like it is, peel off the, the band-aid and there's something similar in us. So I think once you hit Danica, that 40 year, yeah. Danica is a very good mix of some of the qualities that Kim has, some of the qualities that you have, and some of the qualities that I have. And I love that about Danica. She's she's like, she's she's a little bit more girly than some, but she's not girly girl. Right. She's brilliant. She's absolutely sharp and brilliant. And I love her wit. It's like, boom, it's on there. But she's also very no nonsense. Like, I'm not going to do that either. You know, I'm not going to put up with that. So there are things about her that I like too. And I, and I see that. Um, Morgan, if, you another back, one like that. if you go back to like the time you were 20, right. And you look at the people that you're friends with now, just by looks alone, you know, like, I don't think I would be your friend, Katie. You do ballet. You're so uptight. Like I see you and I see uptight, right? Or Danica, she's a flipping Barbie. Why do I want to be a friend with a Barbie? But, you know, as we get older, we're like, no, you do okay. not, Kim. Stop. No, Kim. No. <laughs> you do not. No, no, Kim. You need to be exactly who you are. You are awesome. He and is and awesome. we don't like look, we actually get to know the people before we judge them now. Because Danica mm -hmm. is not a Barbie and you're no. not uptight. Well, you're you're a drama mama, but that's okay. We love you anyway. <laughs> but you know what's so funny about my drama mama? It's not drama like she says. What my thing is is that I, I exaggerate and I do it on purpose and she knows it. Because this is a typical conversation between me and Emily's voicemail. Um, Emily, where are you? I could be dying on the side of the road and you wouldn't know it because you're not picking up your phone. <laughs> I've right. got a paper cut. I'm bleeding to thing. death. <laughs> I haven't eaten anything in like a half an hour. I'm dying. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> and you think you ignored it. I love it. <laughs> that serious is a heart attack. I have left her both those messages. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put Kelly on solo just to let her laugh. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, you are so beautiful. I love oh it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I see. Even Carlos has died. Carlos, Car I'm, okay. I just need to his comments to talk to him. There, I have a problem. <laughs> you guys, Carlos and I have the same brain here. He's died three times with Emily on the phone. Do you guys want to know why you've died with me on the phone? What? What? I love you guys very much. You're both so long winded <laughs> that I don't want to answer the phone because it's going to be like, wah, 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 wah. And then I'm going to be like, I'm dying on the side of the road because I haven't <laughs> eaten in days. <laughs> and we all know that's not true because Emily will just sit there and go, I'm going to eat whatever I want to eat. Oh Whatever. <sighs> yeah, she's lying. She is lying because Emily Emily chats too, so don't even go there. Whatever. Okay, wait. I want to tell this one story. I love Emily's a fibber too. Emily's a big fibber. Okay, she never never locked me in the basement. I will cop to that. However. <laughs> Katie has called me before and said, hey, I want to know about this. And then went on and talked about a million things and never, ever figured I out what, what she fun. called yep. me. Yeah. And then I got to phone went, I totally <laughs> forgot to ask her. And I went, can you believe that? She called me, asked me a question, then talked and hung up on me and didn't ever get the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Because usually something else squirreled me away, you know? I have attention deficit, ooh, shiny disorder, okay? Or there's a bird. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very real fear. Bleh. I can't even talk about it. It's a real fear, you guys. 
<laughs> if you knew how many times I could die because my next door neighbor has a bird feeder next to the driveway. And Katie, how is it that you're afraid of a bird, but you eat chicken? It's dead. <laughs> it can't peck my eyes out when it's on my plate. <laughs> Serious, you guys. How can it peck my eyes out? You know? How can it peck your eyes out in the first place? You have hands. Okay, Slot it away. Like us to put our names on the screen. Um, until she does that, I'm Katie. I'm Kelly. And I'm Emily. There you go. And we're here doing swipe up to chat. And we're actually looking for more people to jump in. We've had a bunch of girls say, Yeah, I'll come in, but no guys like weigh in on the situation. Right, let's get that? house in here. Try, yeah, try I can come in here. Not mine. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and drop you out. Okay, Kelly. Don't drop me on my head. No, okay? no, no. Well, you need, I already home. know how your brain works. We can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Kelly. <laughs> you know, I don't think Carlos is really cooking. Uh, Carlos. Well, I, I had to uh, censor myself again. <laughs> Oh my. Can you guess what I was going to say? I don't even want to say. I know. Nope. Nope. <laughs> no, I cannot. And I know I'm good. I'm good. So can Chuck hop in here? I would love Chuck. I mean, even, even if you have to get on a wig, Chuck, and you have to be like Pemfusia or you have to be Dante with your do-rag, you should come on in and, and tell us how it is. Apparently Crystal's posing as Opa Dopa now. Is that <laughs> So there's a link actually pinned to the broadcast. Anybody can click it and join us in the green room. And it doesn't have to be one at a, well, it has to be one at a time broadcasting, but we can have more than one person in the green room. Unfortunately, we ran out of snacks, so. That's because I've got the M&Ms. Yeah, she picked them all out because she was dying on the side of the road. Starting. Well, seriously, <laughs> I could have died. Totally could have died. And this one time she got a paper cut and she bled gallons, gallons. I almost, I almost bled to death. Mm. I could have died that day. <laughs> if you're on my Snapchat, you knew that I was dying. <laughs> so, yes, we all know that, that I, I exaggerate a little bit. But when I do it, you guys all know that I'm joking when I do it, you know? Oh, because your exaggerations aren't little. No, they're crazy. Unfortunately, when I exaggerate, everybody believes me. Yeah. Or right. because then there are times that I'll say to Miller when he when I call him, really? Seriously? Finding you answer the phone? I've been calling you for like 15 hours. <laughs> it was like two minutes. I don't think your family's used to that because when I did my snap story and I was like, Katie locked me in the basement. I can't get out. Your Don't daughter you called to help me out <laughs> give me coffee <laughs> I forgot about that <laughs> and I called them like Emily you were not locked in the basement you know what's so funny my mom doesn't even know when I'm like fibbing I'm like mom you've known me for how many years now seriously I can't tell you're so serious mm. My daughter wants underwear. Can I put you solo for a second? <laughs> I mean, you Great. said it. You know I'm going to do it. <laughs> so I would love to see somebody else jump in here. I know Lori wanted to jump in, but right, I, well. I wanted uh, Chuck to job, jump in. So what the heck? Is he still in here or did he take off? I wish you could, like, see a list of who's actually watching. Carlos. <laughs> Hola. What did you make? Grilled chicken and salad. What kind of dressing? Why is Emily? Was she naked? Who was that behind you? Oh, her daughter's behind her. Getting dressed, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Her daughter's always naked on camera. I don't understand this. <laughs> Emily's usually naked. I'm surprised Emily's dressed now. She's never dressed. Oh, I, I know. And especially in the mornings. Naked snapper. Yeah, and then she says, I'm, uh, I'm not even going to get into it. I told her she had to be clothed when she came to my house. <laughs> yeah, I, I met her when she was in New York. Yes. Yeah, that was interesting. 
<laughs> I love her. I absolutely love her. She really, you know, we joke about being twins, but she really is as polar opposite as we are. She's like my twin. And then I had to meet her again here in Atlanta. So what a likelihood of within about a week or so's time, we're in two different cities. I know, right? So Carlos, I saw yes, some of your comments in here. Tell me about who do you have a best friend? Wow, that's a good question. I have a lot of good friends. I don't think right now at this moment I would have like someone that I could say um, would be a best friend. Somebody that somebody I talk to on a consistent basis about friendship stuff. Mm -hmm. Friendship stuff. Uh, but I think that's my fault. That's not, I don't think that's because somebody's doing something wrong. Do you miss having that kind of a friendship? Uh, if I had the time, probably, but I'm always doing something. So, no, it doesn't even go through my mind that often. Do you need a best friend like mine so that you're both so busy that you don't notice when the other one's too busy for you? <laughs> so, so Jacques, uh, who's in the comments, says, yes, it's your fault. Uh, yes, um, it is my fault. It, um, now, Jacques uh, is probably my best friend from, like, high school and, and college. Okay. So we've, been, we've been very close friends for a very long time. I was just going to ask that. Is, do you have a friend from growing up that you keep in touch with? So I know, well, I, well, well uh, so using Jacques as an example, we haven't talked in, in a few years. Now, I'm sure if we if we hung out, it'd mm -hmm. be just like if we were hanging out yesterday. Uh, that's usually the kind of friendships I have. Okay, but, so Jacques, that's your cue. Pick up the phone, call him, set up a time, get together. <laughs> yeah. I well, was thinking he could like jump in and he could say hi on the stream. Is he here, Jacques? Are you watching? Yeah, he's, he's he's watching. He's he's laughing yeah. at me because yes, I see. haven't I haven't been in touch. I mean, you know, and plus there's been so much drama in my life. And I think part of that is one of the reasons why I kind of just kept myself enclosed. Mm -hmm. But um, but it's, you know, now that most of that drama has gone away and, and there's resolution and I'm able to refocus. Now, because I have this energy of focus, I'm able to kind of multitask, which also <laughs> is non-conducive to good friendships. And Jacques is not FCC approved. Not FCC approved. So my I mean, question for so he's you. He's not wearing a shirt is my guess is what he's saying. So he's naked too. <laughs> See, there's just something about being naked. You guys judge all you want. No shame <laughs> in my game. And I would just like to say that Carlos, his nickname is Naked Head. Because he uh, shows up to meetings naked. Now Kelly is saying that um, men are not as emotionally and I'd have to disagree. I, I would disagree with that too. I, I am I am above and beyond emotional and very attached to people. But are you a guy? Oh, yes. that's an interesting question. <laughs> that's that is an interesting question. Um, I, I I handle a lot of things almost on in a female side of of ways of reacting. So I, uh, like my wife would say, I am the woman of the marriage. How would you describe that emotionally? Is it is it because you are, you, your feelings are hurt easier or? No, just... no, I mean like I wear my heart on my sleeve and I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah, and, and, and Jacques knows, Jacques knows me yeah. probably more than most people do. Um, we, we've gone through a lot of stuff together, so. And I've been fair. I think I've been fairly consistent in that um, over the years, for over many years. Right. But Emily's not aware of her heart on her sleeve kind of girl. But if she connects emotionally and it hits her, you know it when she does. Oh, I do know it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anybody who is my friend knows I am a very emotional person, and you can hurt me at the drop of a hat. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you. I'm not going to let you hurt me and not let you know that you hurt me. I don't, I don't hurt easily, even though I'm emotional. And, uh, and the reason why is because I don't take anything personally. Okay. So, so, I mean, someone can, uh, can be insulting and, and degrading. And because I think it's dumb, I don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there. I don't take as much personally now as I used to. Um, but I, like I've told Emily before, I, I, you know, I, if I'm your friend, you know, I'm your friend. I love very hard. 
but I forgive so easily that I'm like, whatever, it's done, you know? So I have a question for Carlos here. Uh oh. Carlos and I have gotten pretty close, okay? I would consider him one of my closer friends. If somebody brings something up to you, you said you don't take it personally because you think it's dumb. What if something they're bringing up is valid or you see how it is playing out in the relationship? Do you just dismiss it as dumb or do you no. take it in and let it affect no, something, you? I'll, you know, I'll, I'll find myself to be a fairly honest guy, including honest with myself. So if there's something that I'm maybe I'm just not seeing in my peripheral vision and you bring it up to me and it seems uh, a little bit too abrasive or honest, I I can accept it. I can be like, you know what? I, I think you have a point. I think you're right. And I'll own it as far as, as far as that's concerned, as opposed to trying to feel like you're trying to hit me with something and then snack it back to you. I can vouch for that. He does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get that. Wow, I got so somber on here. Like the girls were on here, and just like, <laughs> and then Carlos comes on, and we're just like, Carlos comes on and goes, "I'm very serious." Mm -hmm. and I got the right voice. So very serious. <laughs> oh no, I'm I'm not that serious. I'm, I mean, everybody would know that I'm not that serious. Now Kim says that if anyone hurts uh, Emily, just let her know, and she'll take care of them. I believe yeah. that too. she's so my ride or die sister, right? I believe. I believe that. You know, I gotta say, there are a lot of women on here um, that we would we would do that for each other. Period. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I would I would I would cut somebody for Emily. <laughs> Likewise, I don't think there's anybody that hasn't been in this broadcast that I want to cut somebody for. Ride or die. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is she'll say to me, I'll, "I want to punch you in the face." Oh yeah, I do. That's her thing. That's what she says. But but, but what happened? What happened when you asked me, "Do you want to smack me now?" What did I say? I have to censor myself again, sorry. Because what you said and what I heard are two different things. Oh, really? <laughs> what did you hear when I, when I responded to you? I'm not allowed to say because Katie's on this and we can't like associate her name with smut. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll tell you off the air. <laughs> this is a G-rated show. Okay, what I said is, I, what I said was, I would never smack you because I have too much respect for you. Right. So how's that smut? Uh, no, no, no. I said no, what I you know. said and what I heard are two different things. I'm not did, saying I you? misheard you. I'm just saying in my mind, I made you say something different. Oh my goodness. What? What did Emily? What did you hear? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Okay. What I heard is my Carlos voice. <laughs> okay. I can't get low enough. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm absolutely dying. <laughs> you know what's funny? My daughter does that. Said, Daddy, I'm gonna impersonate you, and then she starts going like, <laughs> "It's just this rumbles." Hello, my name is Carlos. <laughs> now I don't hear him like that. I just hear this very deep voice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like a dying zombie. <laughs> it sounds like a whale. It's just, uh, <laughs> So, so that's what she heard. Yeah, she, I know what I heard. Anybody wants she, to know what I heard, then go ahead and reach out to me personally because it's not user friendly. No. <laughs> I know. No, it's not. Okay, Katie, could you tell? Like, you know what I want, what I heard, right? I'm not about to. I have no idea what you're talking about. So we're doing this promo the other day, and she says something about men, and I have to censor myself. And she's like, "What were you gonna say?" We got off the air. What were you gonna say that you had to censor yourself? And so I told her, she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, here's the thing, Emily will say things and I'll go, what is, what is that? <laughs> and then she's like, 
So now I'm just going to give her the look because I don't know what half the stuff is. Well, I think that happened when we did our behind the scenes show the other day. And you're like, what is that? And I made you look it up and you were online and you're like, okay, let me check the Urban Dictionary. <gasps> oh, I was like, <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> so is that how everybody hears me? Is just this rumble? I don't hear a rumble. I hear oh, a very oh deep voice that says, I'm Carlos. I'm talking very seriously. So listen to me. This is interesting. I was, I was at the library with Carlos the other day and what I saw, and I don't know if you saw the same thing, Carlos, but I saw a guy who was like jealous and maybe even a little bit racist because of Carlos's stature and rumbly voice. Yeah. Oh, that's, you told me about that. Yeah. Oh, so, so did she tell you that the guy wanted to get the police on me? Yeah, I was like, seriously. It, it literally, it, we're we're in a meeting where we're it's a it's a Zoom meeting or something on on the computer, and I'm watching on my phone or whatever. And the guy comes has to come over to me to me and say, "Sir, you're not allowed to use the phone inside the library." I'm like, "Oh," so I turned off the phone and I went on the meeting on my iPad. That's not no, a phone. I was on my laptop. We, and right. he saw that I was in the meeting too. So, but because I spoke maybe three words, he came over. The second time he came over, when I spoke again, he's like, he just looks at me and shakes his head. So he goes back, comes out with a sheet of paper that says, you know, we're going to report you to the police. <laughs> like, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not on the phone. Why are you and bothering they circled me? It, yeah, because you continually use your phone. And I'm just like, are you serious? And I'm like, I'm not on the phone. And when I went into the library, I said, hey, look, I have a Zoom meeting that I got to be on. Is there any section of the library that I can go into that we can be on this meeting and not disturb anybody? We were around in the corner. There was nobody around. But yeah. I was I was was the the it was so loud at all. And they let it happen because he thought Emily was hot. Yeah. But Carl is like, here's like, mm, that guy did not deserve that woman. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh your imitation voice is even better that's fine <laughs> and so um, so the, i mean i just chose not to say anything i turned off everything i was like fine i'm not you know no i asked him a question he's like but yeah because if I, I if i speak one word the entire <laughs> library can hear it he's got that bait you guys know pentatonics you know avi He's got an Avi voice. Okay, so what I need you to do at some point, because I think it would be funny, is I need you to do some sort of video or snap where we can't see you, but we just hear your voice going, hello, this is God. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think you could do it. We did that to our kids through the vents. So one time they were in the basement when we first moved here, and I realized I could hear them through the vent in the bathroom. So we were like, what are you doing? They're like, who is that? <laughs> and they're like, that's funny. This is God. <laughs> <laughs> On that we're note, you guys, it is 659. Carlos uh, is not God, even though he'd like to be. He'd like women to worship him like he was God. He's like, all oh, hell, the mighty Phoenix. <laughs> wait, someone's asking if I ever laugh. I always laugh. Always. You know, I've it's so funny because I have never seen you. No, I have seen you serious, but he's not this mafioso person that everybody seems to think he is. Yeah, that's the reputation I have. Like, because I go on camera and people think I'm just this serious person. And I mean, Jacques, I think knows. I'm not. Carlos is the voice of Oz. Thanks, Jacques. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, right? You laugh with us more often, Carlos. I, I'm always laughing. I'm always smiling. And yet, people say I'm Mr. Mafioso. See, I never pictured him as Mr. Mafioso. I, he was just very seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock. Yeah. We're getting You we guys, thank you for us for swipe up to chat. I can't remember what next week's theme is, but we'll surprise you. And it'll be good. And yeah. hopefully we'll have more fun people on here. And we'll get we'll get Carlos to come on and pretend like he's God. He'll be like, welcome to swipe up to chat. Emily, I saw what you did last night. Shame on you. <laughs>